Hey everybody, happy pandemic is getting kind of grim out there, you know, but I was going to do this video and I was going to, you know, I was going to make it up on a, you know, actually do a nice production behind it. Now I wouldn't even call it a production because I'm a little too low class for that, but I was going to just get a bunch of examples of flowers to show you. Okay. But I'm not, you know, I, I'm not going to fuck around. I just, I want to get this out there and, you know, just get a good intro and then you could take it or leave it, whatever, maybe I'll, maybe I'll delete it in a month and do a better one, you know, but I, I don't really, I don't really care, how you doing, by the way, what are you doing, you working on puzzles, well, how you spending your time, watching a little bit too much Netflix, eh, could be the case, anyway, I, I did this because I want to show you, uh, you know, I want to show you how to look at flowers, so that when you goddamn, you know, when you're out there fucking around, you know, you could be walking through a vacant lot, you see something growing out of the, out of the damn, uh, sidewalk cracks and shit, you could at least look at the flower and see what it is, okay, it makes the world a lot more exciting, you know, and like I said before, it's too bad that the, you know, the garden centers and the garden shows and the old ladies and the fucking housewives on Prozac, no offense, uh, you know, kind of took the flower game away, you know, kind of spoiled it for a lot of people that might not otherwise be into it, they might find this shit boring, okay, because flowers are just biomechanically, they're fucking, they're absolutely fantastic, and incredible, fascinating, you know, they're like, they're, they are like puzzles, they reveal evolutionary histories, and ecologies, and you know, you ever see that thing about the orchid that Darwin found, you Chucky Darwin found 150 years ago, he seen this orchid, and he figured out that it was pollinated by a moth that he didn't even know existed yet, and then after he was, after he died, they found a moth, and you know, it was, and you could just tell that by looking at the structure of the damn orchid, so they're absolutely uh, fascinating, you know, richer world, you know, and also, uh, flowering plants, aka angiosperms, are basically the base of the food chain. If it wasn't for flowering plants, we wouldn't be here, okay? Because you're not eating, what are you eating? You're not eating fucking pine nuts, you know? Maybe if you make some good pesto every once in a while, but you're not, you're not eating ferns or conifers, the gymnosperms, you know? So let's start with the flowering plant evolution, okay? The flowering plants kind of came out of scene 125 million years ago. You know, the, the Jurassic had just ended, the dinosaurs were still kicking about mammals were just tiny little rats living in the ground you know like morganocodon and whatnot okay there were no dogs there were no dog i like fucking with them though it's funny when you got healers you got to fuck with them a little bit just neurotically you know just psychologically tease them a little bit it's okay he takes it like a champ he gets mad look he knows i'm talking about him anyway you know so there was the mammals were small there were there were the fucking tree redwoods were around monkey puzzle trees were around the ericarias the the, the, the Benitales, they look like cycads, they were around, but no flowers yet. So flowers came out 125 million years ago, and the first ones were tiny. They were fucking tiny. You're looking like Arche fructus, okay, that those guys found over there in China. You look at some of the, the earliest flowers, they were tiny. They were most likely aquatic. They were, they didn't look that, they didn't look like hat shit, you know, they weren't nice. They wouldn't, I don't know if it'd calm you down if you were feeling uh, like you wanted to hit somebody in the head with a brick. Because they were just small. They were diminutive little shits. But, you know, once they did their thing, <clears throat> they had an explosive radiation. Just diversified in species. And that's, what, that's one of the things that always conf confused Darwin. Is how did these goddamn things in a span... You know, it's, it's just... You look at the fossils and, you know, 130, 125 million years ago, there were none. And then all of a sudden, they were just everywhere. You know? Kind of like coronavirus. A dark joke. Anyway... So the thing is that they're, they're very successful, you know, all plants you see are angiosperms, flowering plants, you know, almost all of them, except for the conifers, well, I'm ignoring the ferns too, forget what I said, the point is they're fucking everywhere, and they're comprised the base of the human food chain, even if you're eating a goddamn cow, the cow is eating a goddamn angiosperm, it's eating a flowering plant, so it would behoove you to know a little about what their structure is like, and how they function, and, uh, you know, basically you could look at a flower and it's not just the aesthetically pretty, eh, whatever that means, you know, it's just nice to look at. Who gives a shit about that? You can actually look at it biomechanically and know what the fuck is going on, how this thing is attempting to make more of itself and, uh, you know, how they came to dominate the landscape. Okay, so I got a couple books I want you to read here and it's not going to hurt. You know, you got Zom Zomleffer's book. I don't know how you pronounce it. Zomleffer, whatever. This is a, this is a great book. She's down in Georgia. And I never, I don't know her, but I emailed her once. And I, yeah, this you could get used online for like 20, 25 bucks. The new copies are like 60, which no book should cost 60 bucks. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's not her fault. It's just that fucking, evidently it's probably not in high demand. 
And so, uh, yeah, all textbooks are a scam. It's like education in this country in general is a scam. You know, it's been fucking, they got to make money off anyway. Uh, but, you know, Simpson's book, Plant Systematics, that's another, he's got three editions of this. He just put it out a third edition. I just got it. I got all three. They're great. And it's heavy, you know. You throw it at someone, it's going to hurt. But it, most importantly, this guy covers all the bases from morphology. Don't be intimidated by it. From morphology to molecular phylogenetics, all that shit. He's got the nice cladograms. We'll talk about this in a minute. Very important. And then, of course, uh, plant identification terminology. A little less charming. It's just a straight-up dictionary of words as they per, you know, pertain to uh, inflorescences, i.e. compound flowers and different structures, etc. But all these are good, you know. And uh, if you're broke, I mean, you should support the author. But if you're broke, you know, you just you get them on LibGen, too, okay? Read them on your phone. Botany in a day, this is all right. If you don't know shit about shit, this is a good thing to start with. But you really should just, you know, it, it expresses the idea of how you identify plants by their flowers. Not by their goddamn leaves, but primarily by their flowers and their reproductive structures. You know, it, the evolutionary interrelatedness of different species is conveyed much more so by the reproduct reproductive structures than by the goddamn leaves, okay? So flowers and fruits. You want to look at flowers and fruits, not goddamn leaves. Some, sometimes you look at leaves and they can help diagnose, but mostly it's the flowers, at least if you're trying to figure out what family or genus. So a big word I want you to remember this. I'm going to beat you over the head with it a couple of times, is the idea of synapomorphies, okay? Synapomorphies and monophyletic groups. Monophyletic, Okay. Okay, synapomorphy is a, is a shared trait, and they can be molecular, i.e. in the DNA barcode. You know, you hold two, two different DNA barcodes from two different organisms next to each other, and if they overlap a lot, they're a lot more similar than if they don't overlap that much at all. You know, that's why human beings, as sociopathic and insane uh, and seemingly bent on our own destruction as we are, are closely related to chimps. And, you know, you see chimps acting the same way, too. You know, oftentimes chimps are acting a lot more civil than human beings, though. But they'll still rip your arms off and beat you over the head with them. Okay, so synapomorphies can be uh, molecular, you know, DNA barcodes, or they can be morphological, too, okay? And remember, synapomorphies are basically just trademarks, shared trademarks uh, due to uh, descending from a, both, both plants descending from a common ancestor, okay? And they're really important for, you know, if you're looking at families and stuff like that. A good example would be, uh, you know, all orchids having pollinia. Okay, pollen aggregated into two little nodules, or all, all members of the carrot family producing an inflorescence that's an umbel. Okay, or uh, or uh, all all sunflowers producing a capitulum. You know, which is uh, the way the, the typical characteristic of the flowers of the sunflower family. Okay, now, but you got to be careful because sometimes what look like uh, you know the same thing, the same structure on two plants. Turns out to be, a, it turns out to not be the case. You know, the two plants aren't related at all. They just both produced those uh, structures or those flower types due to uh, convergent evolution, okay? Instead of being homologous traits, which is due to shared ancestry, they just uh, both produced those traits due to uh, responding to similar environmental pressures. A good example is cacti and euphorbia, you know, the euphorbia with spines, okay? They almost look alike, you know, if you don't know, if you don't know the two, uh, Plants it well, then you get up close, you realize they're not. They have completely different flowers. Uh, you know, euphorbs produce stipular spines, cacti spines or modified leaves, etc. And again, it's just convergent evolution. So going back to synapomorphies, this is a good book if you're just getting into it to explain to you what the synapomorphies uh, in certain plant families are. And all family, all plant families will have similar flowers based on those synapomorphies. But he doesn't call them in his book. He don't call them synapomorphies. He just calls them patterns. See. Patterns of the Cashew or Sumac family, but he's really running home the idea. That's why I recommend this, okay? And you can uh, you could buy this book. I don't know how much the guy sells it for, but or you can I think they got it on LibGen too. If you're a little bit low on a dollar, you just want to get it for free. So anyway, but that's a good book to uh, to basically you know rip, run home the idea. Look at it. Look, it's got patterns of the Mallow family right there. See that? Okay, five patterns of five. And, uh, you know, the, the whole bunch of stamens fused to a central column that surrounds the uh, female part, the pistillate part, right there. Okay? This is, this is good for this is good for that. Okay? Good introduction. If you want to get, get move on beyond this, go to Plant Systematics or that other oh, Zomlifer book. Anyway, so uh, the, point, uh, the point I want to talk about here, monophyletic and synapomorphies. Okay? Synapomorphies are just shared traits uh, due to uh, sharing a common ancestor, you know? 
Okay, so if like if people think about it, like I got a big schnoz because my dad, who looks like kind of a short, fatter Joe Pesci, Joe Pesci has a big schnoz. So we both have big schnozzes because the gene for big schnozzes is uh, the same gene. You know, we both come from the same background, you know, but uh, he's a little bit crazier than I am. But anyway, you, you, you catch the drift. So, you know, uh, flowers that uh, have a uh, shared synapomorphies often form monophyletic groups. And you got all these other words, paraphyletic, they're not fucking closely related. You know, they're closely related to the, well, it's, it gets really common. You got polyphyletic, which means you're way off the mark if you're grouping organisms together. And you got paraphyletic, which means all those organisms might share a common ancestor, but you're leaving one out. Okay. And of course, this is the cladogram. Okay. Cladograms are important. Someone just did a cladogram of uh, the recent evolution of the coronavirus. And, it, you know, when you look at a cladogram, it really, the point is to, to lay out evolutionary relationships for you. Okay. And that's, that's a fucking wonderful thing to think about too, because if you find one plant in one place that's in the same genus or family as a plant that's 6,000 miles away, you got to think, you know, and, and it's known to be native there. It wasn't brought by people. Then you got to think how they, how they, fan out like that you know how far back did it go how far back were they were they occupying the same region the same land and that that field of study is called biogeography but that's all that's fucking fascinating but it's a whole different uh, can of worms right there we're just focusing on flower morphology so shared synapomorphies are what put flowers together in the same group okay? for instance if i see a plant like this and i don't know what it is but i see that flower structure which is five petals you know not united not fused together distinct petals with a goddamn this thing is you know a, basically a column with a bunch of different stamens on it and at the top you got the uh the stigma which is the uh you know the the female part the pistolate part i know that that's going to be a mallow you take me to goddamn you take me to goddamn thailand and you show me something in the, the mallow family that i never seen before i never seen a plant i'll look at the flower and i'll know it's a goddamn mallow and that's what i want you to be able to do when i'm done running my mouth and talking all this shit you'd be able to get a little bit closer of an idea. Okay, so here we go. Starting off with the evolution of flowering plants. This is from Mike Simpson's book, Plant Systematics Really. I bet you could get used copies of this for fucking $10 online. The first or second edition, you know. Take it with a grain of salt since it's not up to date, but the base uh, ideas are going to be, be be good. They're going to be legit. Okay, so cladogram, right? You got the magnolia, some of the, what you call a, quote, basal angiosperms. That is the earlier branching angiosperms. Then you got the, the monocots, and then you got the eudicots, which is basically, you know, anything that's not a monocotyledon. My monocots is just a word for one cotyledon. Agaves, palm trees, uh, corn, lilies, they're all monocots, okay? And then uh, the eudicots are basically the quote, and I say that in quotes, higher flowering plants, the more recently evolved uh, flowering plants, okay, that came later, all right? And I said, remember, these black lines, these black bars, indicate synapomorphies okay they indicate shared traits that evolve once and then everything that comes after that that evolves after that shares that that trait so pollen tricopate that means the pollen's got looks like three ridges on it if you look at a pollen grain of any of these plants under a fucking electron microscope they're gonna you're gonna see the tricopate thing they're doing a tricopate they got three ridges cotyledons again are these these fucking here's a sylphium seedling i germinated Two different uh, cotyledons. I mean, here's the, the first leaf. The first leaf looks like something not on it. Goddamn fucking slugs. Okay. And here's an agave. When this thing germinated, it was just one single, looked like a blade of grass. Monocot, eudicot. All right. So anyway, all right. So these are these are all orders. Cary, Ceratophyllales, Ranunculales, Proteales, Caryophyllales, that's the spinach, cacti, and beets. Uh, Santillales, that's the mistletoes. Uh, Saxifragales, rosids, asterids, etc. So... You got the orders right there. And to figure out what order a goddamn plant is, once you figure this trick out, this will help you immensely. Because you could just, you get the Wikipedia app. Look, I'm looking at damn uh, kudzu, all right? Bane of the South, all right? Okay, it's already mentioned in the, right, in the, in the damn Wikipedia page. Fabaceae is the family, okay? But you go down here to these quick facts, and you click on it. And then you get a goddamn taxo chart, okay, showing everything from kingdom on down. What the fuck is that? I don't know what the hell. What is it? Get out of here. I don't know what she's talking. I don't know. Anyway. So family Fabaceae, order Fabales. Okay. It's, it's in the rosids. And uh, uh, subfamily Fabordia. You can tell that just by looking at those, uh, the flower heads. They look, uh, you know, Fabordia. The pea family's got a bunch of different subfamilies based on how the flowers look. 
Okay, you know, if it's like a mimosa or one of the senas or, uh, you know, they just revised it. But there used to just be three of them. Now there's like six, but there used to just be three. So subfamily for Bordier, that's everything that looks like a typical pea flower. Banner, wings, and keel. Okay, the petals. Anyway, so get that out of the way. But moving right along, let's get to the, uh, the actual morphology itself. Okay, all right, here we go. Getting to the meat. All right, getting to the meat. Okay, so you got monocots and eudicots, remember, all right? Plus the basal angio swims, that's a, whole, that's a whole nother can of worms. Don't worry about it. Just focus on monocots and dicots, okay? Knowing that dicots, there's more to that than just them having two cotyledons, okay? Because they, anyway, the fucking point is monocots got these parts normally in multiples of three, and eudicots normally got them in multiples of five or sometimes four or any of that, okay? So you can look at a, a plant like a lily, for instance, you see six uh, tepals. Tepals since they're indistinct. They're not, there's no clear distinction between petals and tepals, or petals and sepals. So you got tepals. Well, sometimes some lilies do, actually. You know, you just, everything, you, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. Everything is fluid. There are, there's nothing solid. No concrete, right? Leave yourself some mental flexibility. You take a lily, it's got six of those goddamn uh, 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 petals or sepals or tepals, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Agaves, for instance, have Six, they only got tepals. Agaves only got tepals, all right? No clear distinction. They got six tepals, agave flowers, okay? Uh, so you look at those, that's a monica. Multiple of three, it's, a, it's six. You know, you know it's a monica. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, but overall, that's a monocots, multiples of three, eudicots, multiples of four or five, okay? Now, here we got your generic ass flower structure. Even even wrote it out for you, okay? So even spelled it out for you in case, you, you know, you're pretty thick skulled, you can't pick it up. All right, generic ass flower structure. Now, the basic thing you want to get, this is looking down at a flower that's pointing up, okay? There's going to be variations on this. You go to the sunflower family, it's a whole fucking, that's a whole other can of worms. You're going to have to, I, I did a video on one like six or seven uh, months ago, all right? It's somewhat, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, you'll be able to decipher it somewhat, okay? I'm ranting, I was on a lot of coffee, okay, out there standing in a field full of sunflowers, but I, it's a, it does help you understand a little bit what's going on with the sunflower family, right? But that's a whole different can of worms from this. We're just talking about generic ash flower structure, generic flowers, okay? So the basic idea you want to get uh, is basically you got the, looking down, these are these will be the petals, and then subtending that beneath that, closer to the ground, closer to the main axis of the plant, you would have the sepals. Now the petals and sepals together, when you got them both together, they compose what's called the perianth. I should have written that down, okay? Because some of you jackasses will forget it. Perianth, just remember that. Petals and sepals together are perianth, okay? Sepals are also synonymous with calyx. Anytime you hear someone say, the calyx on that motherfucker was uh, beautiful, okay? They're referring to the sepals, okay? And if they're talking about the corolla, oh, that was a nice corolla. He's talking about the petals, okay? Remember that, petals, corolla, sepals, calyx, okay? And here you got stamens, which are the male parts, and a pistil, which always is counterintuitive. Pistil, you normally think dang, but uh, in, the, in, the, in this case, pistil refers to the female parts, the uh, which you would call the megaspores, okay, of the uh, of the plant, okay? Stamens uh, would be, what is, I'm gonna fuck, you know what, I'm gonna fuck you all up. This is conifers, if, too, if you're thinking about conifers, you know, the male parts are normally microstroboli, female uh, is megastroboli, micro for male, mega for females, but don't, don't worry about that. Anyway, the point is, stamens are always more numerous than the pistil, okay? Now, the stamen is composed of a, quite a few parts. What you normally see are the anthers. The anthers hold the pollen. We'll get into that later. Pistil, of course, is always generally in the center. So as long as you grasp the base concept that the stamens are generally more numerous and encircle the female part, the the, the pistil, uh, you'll 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 be all right. You could look at a general, you know, a flower. Go look at like a damn lily, okay, in a, in a in a store, and you'll see those fucking dangly things. There's six of them, just laden with pollen, stamens. Thing in the center that's receiving pollen, it's a pistil. Okay, so there we go. Not not a stamen and pistil. See, even wrote it out for you too, so you could get it, all right? So even you could understand. Generic ass stamen, okay. And again, there's going to be variations to this. So you look at some plants, they don't even have a damn filament. Some species don't even have a filament. The stamens are just, the goddamn anthers are just almost sessile, you know, on the damn, you know, and sometimes these will both be fused together. Look at the damn mallow family. you got a bunch of different fucking, you know, dozens of anthers on a central column, 
and then inside that central column you have the pistol very confusing but if you know once you get the general concept you could look at it and figure it out you could look at any flower and figure it out that's where a biomechanical part comes in they're just fucking fascinating okay so stamens composed of pollen grains and then the anther which is normally looks like two hot dog buns those are called theca those different uh basically these different lobes you know and then they're, they, sometimes pollen's blue most of the time it's yellow so a lot of times it could be white too all right, and then the filament is just the stock that holds it up. But remember, sometimes it's, the filament's not even there, okay? Go to some of the basal angiosperms, they got what are called laminar stamens, okay? Some of the earlier diverging uh, angiosperms, they got laminar stamens. They look good like uh, Yerba, Yerba Mansa, okay, the, the uh, Anamopsis. Good example, okay? And then uh, over here, you got the your generic ass pistol. This would be... Uh, this is more like a cacti pistol because it's got a rather large stigma, which is like the plant cervix. It receives the pollen, receives the uh, the male gametophyte. It'll fuck your world up, too. Don't worry. It's just if you want to look it up later. That's why I'm saying those words, not to intimidate you, just if you want to look it up later. It would receive the male gametophyte, the pollen, and uh, and then, you know, of course, the pollen, too, germinates on a stigma, sends a little pollen, or the pollen grain germinates on a stigma, sends a little pollen tube down there, pollinates the ovary these would be carpels these different lobes okay the ovary could be composed of many carpels fused together okay but anyway the ovary is the fruit and when anytime you eat a fruit you're eating an ovary okay ovary is just the you know the, the mature the, the mature uh well not mature but when it, the fruit is just a mature ovary basically okay so you're looking at stigma style again styles just that long extended part sometimes Sometimes there's no style. Oftentimes it's rather long. You look at like a damn mint flower. The styles doesn't look like this at all. It's just a single, looks like a hair, okay? But on the end of that, there is a stigma. And at the base of that, there is an ovary, okay? And the ovary, of course, contains ovules, a.k.a. seeds, okay? So you got an ovary, fruit, ovules, seeds. And again, generic ass pistol, all right? I mean, counterintuitive because you normally think pistol, it's a dang, it's a male part, but it's not. It's, a, it's the female part. Okay, so now we're going to talk about flower sex, okay? So first off, you got perfect flowers, which is what most angiosperms are. They, they got, they're like these guys over here. They got male and female uh, parts on the same plane. You got your stamens, your pistol there, okay? Stamens, male, pistol, female, obviously, all right? Then you got imperfect flowers, and that's where monoecious and dioecious come into play, okay? Monoecious plants have imperfect flowers. It is flowers that either staminate or pistillate, either male or female, but they occur on the same plant, okay? Oak tree is a good example of that. Then lastly, you got dioecious flowers. You know, cannabis, good example of that. You, you know, staminate the imperfect flowers, but the plant themselves are either staminate, you know, or, a, or a female or pistillate. Okay, so you'll have a plant that's got entirely female flowers on it or a plant that's got entirely male flowers on it. Sometimes you get mutants where you get uh, hermaphrodites, but generally, you know, 90, 95% of the time, this is the case. All right, and so you'll notice if you see a flower that's only got these little bug antenna things on it, but it's missing the central ovary and whatnot, uh, you'll know that that's a staminate the plant, it's a male, all right? Something's going on here. It's not a perfect flower, okay? Because normally you should see both parts uh, in the same. Okay, because like I said, most plants are, most angiosperms, most flowering plants are, have perfect flowers. Whereas if you see just one of these, but no stamens around it, none of the little bug antennas, you're going to know, okay, this is, this is just a female flower, something fishy is going on. Now, all flowers are, again, is just a way, a way for plants to go about genetic recombination. Why do they want to go about genetic recombination? Well, genetic recombination is how plants speciate, it's how mutations arise, it's how human beings uh, cultivate plant. They select for plants. Okay, I don't care if it's you know the goddamn corn you're eating or whether it's the the cannabis you're smoking, whatever. All that was selectively bred by human beings via recombination, via genetic recombination, plant breeding. Okay, so you know this comes into play. You don't got to learn about this now, but it, the issue of meiosis comes into play when cells split and it, the daughter cell only has half the chromosomes, which is what a pollen grain is. Okay. A pollen grain is haploid, where the entire rest of the plant is diploid, okay? The ovules inside the ovary are haploid, whereas the rest of the plant is uh, is diploid. It's got two, or it's sometimes polyploid. Plant, plants can be polyploid, but don't worry about it. Just pretend they're all diploid for now. It makes it easier, because humans are diploid, right? You got two copies, all right? And that's all that's going on. He's just trying to genetically recombine. So 
a pollen grain would be equivalent to like a human sperm cell and an ovule would be equivalent to well a human egg cell okay so that's it there you go perfect aka sinaceous but nobody uses that term versus monoecious versus dioecious okay one more concept we got to nail down real quick actinomorphic zygomorphic actinomorphic is just a fancy word for radial sym symmetry right you know radially symmetrical like a circle okay looking at a flower face on Looking at a flower face sign, if it's bilaterally symmetrical, like a heart, it's zygomorphic, okay? Now, with any of these, it's just understand the concepts and the ideas behind the words. Don't just memorize the words, okay? Not just like they tell you to do in high school. Just mindless, you know, passionless, you know, memorization of bullshit that you'll forget two or three years down the line. Use, understand the ideas so that you can actually use them and fucking apply them when you're out looking at a flower in a dirt lot somewhere or, you know, wherever the fuck you end up, okay? Zygomorphic. Uh, can be a trait, it can be a synapomorphic trait for a lot of members in a mint order, mint family in mint order, Lamialis, okay, you'll see this a lot, okay, in families Plantagenaceae, for instance, or this, like I said, the Salvia family, Lamiaceae, okay, remember, order comes, comes uh, orders above family, so order your order is a larger group than family, but anyway, you get the point, okay, almost all the flowers in a Lamiaceae, the mint family, are zygomorphic, okay, whereas like if you look at a a tulip or a lily or something head on it's radially symmetrical so that's just an important uh, important concept to grasp and it, it's it, it obviously helps you describe something if you see you could say oh it's a zygomorphic uh, flower and then you could say what family have zygomorphic flowers oh this is probably in this family or good chance it's related to this whatever actinomorphic uh, etc you know so just to get the get the concept not just don't just memorize the word see this is this is why i love simpson's book Okay, plant systematics, because he's got all these, look, he's got the goddamn, you can see, you get nice illustrations, up close, nice, uh, you know, full frontal nudity of these goddamn flowers, ejaculators, holy shit, Jesus Christ, it's, uh, <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know, it can't they see it. This is what, remember, this one is, okay, zygomorphic, Lamiales, it can't they see I'm not even familiar with the ejaculators, I don't see too many, it can't they see out here, I guess I got to read up on that now, I don't know anything about that, but anyway, you got, look at that, look at that, everything's labeled nice. Okay, really breaks it down for you. He's got one of these for, you know, every family that he features in there. Okay, but anyway, the thing I want to show you, you could go down a wormhole with this. Chapter 9 in that book has, uh, look, he's got, look, gets into the flower, gets into the flower morphology. Got nice diagrams, easy to read, okay? And, uh, but again, none of this shit is going to matter to you until you go out and apply it. You look at something, you try to figure out what the fuck is going on here. I say that all the time. I still say that when I look at flowers sometimes. Middle of fucking desert, I'm crouching on the ground looking at a flower. What the fuck is going on here? I don't know. If you know if I, it's a new plant. Did that a lot in Chile. I did a whole lot of that. What the fuck is going on here in New Caledonia? You know, you're trying to figure out what the shit is going on with this flower. But anyway, so this is the whole uh, thing about inflorescences, okay? This, this, this part. And inflorescence... It's just basically a compound flower, okay? Because flowers, you know, you don't always look. It's not like tulips. There's just one single flower on a tulip, okay? Many times, you'll, you'll the predominant form for most flowers is an, in, or most, you know, reproductive structures on angiosperm flowering plants is an inflorescence. It's a bunch of flowers aggregated together in a compound structure, okay? I don't care how it is. How it is. It's, they're, they're all stuck together, okay? You get everything from an umbel, like milkweed, seven umbel, Okay? You go to the carrot family, APAC, they got compound umbels, so this would be an umbel, and then at the end of one of these, instead of being a flower, be another umbel. Okay, real, fuck your mind up good, real nice. Okay, scorpioid symes, get all the, all the different, you know, all this stuff, I still struggle with this. It could be hard to memorize. You just gotta, you know, the more you see it, and you look at the, it, it you look at a, at a compound flower, you know, a plant's a, sexual reproductive organs you figure what what the fuck you just ask questions and you what would you call that you know so you got you got to you know, know how a spike differs from a raceme and how a raceme differs from a panicle right the difference being a raceme all those flowers are on little uh, independent stalks independent little pedicels a spike they're just sessile okay like some of the some of the uh uh, those uh, Midwest orchids, I can't think of a goddamn genus. Now. Anyway, or, or a panicle is it like basically a compound raceme, okay? Uh, you know, verticillaster, that's another trademark you often see in the Lamiaceae, all right? So it's just it's just going down a wormhole just trying to fig you know, figure out what you would call it. And then there's, these are these are pretty interesting, specialized inflorescences, cyathium, euphorbias, poinsettias, uh, etc. All got the, all got a cyathium. 
okay, which is a really weird, this is, this is not one single flower. These, these independent little guys are the male flowers that surround, you know, you'd think they were just stamens, but they're not. They're actual independent flowers surrounding the, uh, the female, uh, the, the, the massive ovary right there, okay? Uh, spadix, you got those with the aeroids, like the monsteras and shit, the fucking plants you always see people trying to kill in their homes. You see them in malls. Get a lot of aeroids in malls because they're adapted to the understory. A lot of them are adapted to the understory of the jungle. So they, they can get, you know, they're, they can tolerate the heat, the low light conditions, the lack of the intermittent lack of water, etc. Catkin, you get those on oaks, okay? Uh, what what the fuck else we got? Spikeless, that's the grasses. Asteraceae, sunflower family, capitulum. Oh god, that that this these this family will intimidate the shit out of you. But they're it's the sunflower family is fucking fascinating though. Once you learn about it, you just gotta. It's just you're just working. It's just a new concept to learn because it's it's so specific to that family. Okay, basically a bunch of you know upwards of sometimes 500, 600 flowers aggregated into one compound head you know, called the Sudanthium. It's supposed to look like a flower, but it's actually composed of a bunch of tiny flowers. It's supposed to look like a single flower, but anyway. So you get the, I, I guess I can wrap this up. Are you still watching this even? I don't fucking, I don't know how you're doing it. I figured I would have put you to sleep already. Anyway, you get the point, okay? You got flowers that got the general, uh, general uh, morphology, general structure, but then there's a whole bunch of different variations on it, you know, being that evolution's had 125 million fucking years to work it out, you know, diversify, uh, and uh, you just take that and run with it. You know, you could. There's a lot of shit you can get just by uh, crouching down every once in a while and looking at what's growing out of the fucking uh, the crack in the concrete. I don't care if you're in, in Brooklyn and the sidewalks covered in piss. Actually, this is more like San Francisco, probably the human shit. Some some uh, bummy actually just took a dump outside my front door right now here in Oakland. You know, kind of. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. Maybe I'll I'll clean it up at some point. But right now, I just don't got it in me. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you feel like donating a couple bucks or something, you could do it. If you don't, if you don't want to, that's fine too. You don't got to do that. Don't you love Fraseras? Holy shit. You don't got to do that. I'm not asking, you know, just if you feel like it. If you feel comfortable doing it, you could do that. I don't, I'm not, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not begging you. I don't give a fuck. You know, it's just, if you feel like it, do it. Okay, I could certainly use the burrito. All right. I am also, maybe I'll sell stickers at some point again. You're seeing you eat some crime pay stickers or something. You can go to the bonfire store, buy some merch, you know. But mostly just take a look at some of these books and, uh, you know, get a hand lens, too. This I got, an ex got me this, you know, before she got real mad at me. She got me one of these uh, hand lenses, and then I use it all the time now, you know. We're good now. We're good now. I really appreciate it, but she was mad at me for a while. Anyway, uh, so take one of these out, you know. It's everything. It's, 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 it's great. Even not, not even just looking at plants, looking at anything up close, you can really freak yourself out, you know, especially some of those, some of those uh, stoners who smoke a lot of weed, once you get one of these, you'll blow your mind, you know, you can see the independent uh, pixels and whatnot, anyway, that's all I got for you today, uh, you got any questions, you can email me, and, uh, you know, just fucking, uh, yeah, teach yourself something, right, don't don't spend a whole goddamn pandemic just uh, beating off watching Netflix or playing video games or anything, you know, all that's fine, but just make sure you're you know, going through some mental exercise too, okay? Because otherwise you'll atrophy. Your mind will atrophy. Learn something new, okay? All right, that's all I got. Go fuck yourself. Bye.